This is discussion number three of chapter one, Introduction to Governments. This discussion is entitled, Describing the Differences Between Governments. So how can we describe or differentiate different governments? Well, there's different ways that we can describe them. First of all, we can describe where is the power located in the government process. Is all the government power located in one group of people that control the entire area? We would call this a unitary style of government. Or is the government well spread out with many different smaller groups that have a lot of the power of government and then there's a lot of cooperation in a overreaching government but they don't have a lot of the power. We call that a confederate style of, style of government. And then we have something that's kind of in the middle which we call a federal government where there is power in the central government and then there is also a significant amount of power in the localized governments. Uh, for example, in the United States, we have a national government located in Washington, D.C. that makes laws for everyone who lives in the United States. But we also have a state government in Harrisburg or Maryland. You've got Annapolis or Virginia. You've got Richmond uh, where they make laws for those areas as well. We t officially have a federal style of government. Now, Confederate, that was a, a specific term chosen by the southern states going into the American Civil War because they did not like the idea of the national government telling them what they could do with the states. So they decided that they were going to have a Confederate style of government where there would be some cooperation amongst the states with a national government which was located uh, originally in Alabama and was later moved to Richmond, Virginia after Virginia uh, left the United States in succession. So that's what the federal government and Confederate governments were. That was the big discussion during the American Civil War. So while we take a look at where the power locates in the different areas, we can also take a look at how people participate in the government as a way to describe the government. Uh, first of all, we can take a look at what, what is called a dictatorship. This is where one person or very few people have the only, are the only ones that have ability to make any effect on public policy. There is no one else. There's no voting, per se. It's just these people make all the rules. Uh, a specific type of dictatorship is called an oligarchy when it, it is done by a specific small group. However, let's say that we have more participation in government. Uh, the other extreme is called direct democracy. This is where everyone votes on everything. Um, this becomes a very encumbersome style of government because imagine your parents having to stop every day before they go work to go vote on every little issue that the United States has for business. So what has been developed in that to replace that is what is referred to as indirect democracy. And this is where we go and vote uh, every year, every other year, every four years, depending on what's going on in the different state governments and in the national government, we pick people to do the job for us, to represent us. And so this is referred to as indirect democracy. Now, there are some places in New England that still have direct democracy where about at least once a year, if not more often, the entire town in New England gets together and has a town meeting where they do all the votes for the town business and everyone gets to vote. That's a direct democracy. But direct democracies are going to be very hard to do on anything beyond a town scale. Uh, so when we take a look at democracies, these were new ideas that were... Yes, they were in the ancient Greek and Roman times, uh, but we they went away from that. And so when we walk into the 1700s and we see the American government coming about and as a, a natural product of what the English government was doing, we want to wonder what are some of the basic ideas that say that democracy is an appropriate style of government. And first of all, we want to say that Democracy says that the, each, indi, each person has value. Each person has worth. And so 
Because of that, their opinion matters, and that everybody counts. There's an equality. It's my vote does not count for any more than what your parent votes. Uh, my vote does not count for any more than Bill Gates. We all go to the polling place, we get to vote one time, and that gives each person value. We also have the idea of majority rule. Now, majority rule is based on an idea that's, that says, this was what, Mad, um, what James Madison had argued a lot in, when he was talking about the Constitution in the late 1700s, was that essentially most of the people will be right most of the time. And so as they cooperate with each other and as they find ways that each end of person is going to have wrong ways, Madison held that the only things that could get done in government was that when most people were able to cooperate was only going to be good things, and that people in their selfish natures would not cooperate to create bad ideas. Also with, though, with the idea of majority rule was that there had to be a protection of minority rights. Essentially because people have to remember that while they might be in the majority today, they might not be tomorrow. And in consideration of being that, having that limitation, that they always want to make sure the minority rights are protected. Also within the idea of, of democracy is individual freedom. Also compromise. You cannot perfectly get your own way all the time and that you need to work with other people to combine your ideas and to compromise and, to f and find a, a path between. That is extremely important in democracies. But one other part that is extremely important when it comes to freedom is the idea of a free market economy. You have to have, in order to have freedom politically, you also need to have freedom economically. What do you do with your property? Do you have control over your property? If you don't have control over your property, it's probably because the government's telling you what you can and cannot do with it. And so that's not true freedom. And so uh, political freedom has a lot to do with freedom of property. So when we take a look at the de democratic governments that we have today, and as we look back in history, we see essentially that there have been two major types, presidential and parliamentary. Now, we have a presidential, which means that when we elect our members of Congress, a senator or, or a representative, they are to there to write the laws. But we also elect separately a president to enforce the laws. Now, this was specifically set up by the writers of the Constitution to make sure that we had an additional opportunity to check the power of government. That if the president didn't completely agree with what the Congress said, it wasn't just going to, the president was not just going to do whatever that the Congress um, commanded it. The president was allowed to have its own mind. Now, in a parliamentary style government, which is what the United Kingdom had, England, back uh, when we had the American Revolution, and a lot of different governments today have a parliamentary style of government where they elect a prime minister out of the legislature. And so, essentially, they get whatever they want. And the majority elects them to office, then the majority agrees with them, and every time that they enforce the law, and then if they have a disagreement, then they have what's called a vote of no confidence, where essentially they kick the person out, then they have to have new elections. Uh, the cabinet also comes from the legislature, and so the executive and the legislative are uniquely combined in a parliamentary style of government where there's a lot of cooperation and a lot more things happen, whereas the presidential, uh, it's specifically entailed to make sure that less things happen. Uh, so that's how we can tell the differences between different democracies and describe them uh, when we're showing the differences. The end of discussion number three, describing the difference of governments. This also concludes the discussions of chapter one, introduction to governments. Thank you.